Finding information, communicating, creating, and collaborating online may be second nature to you, but to get the most out of the internet, it's important to understand its history. Seeing how far it has come in such a short time provides perspective on where the internet could go in the future. Most people don't realize that the internet has been around since the 1960s and it's come a long way over the past 40 plus years. In the beginning, everything required complicated text commands and, unlike today, the internet was almost exclusively used in specific fields like science and research, university work, and of course the military, where it originated as the DARPA net. Things have changed dramatically. Today, there really is no stereotypical internet user. Students, travelers, doctors, lawyers, artists, athletes, and teachers all over the world use the web, and all for different reasons. The wide range of features and services that we now think of as standard on the net actually came bit by bit and over a long stretch of time. Email was first introduced in 1972 by Ray Tomlinson, who was working on the ARPA project. It's fair to assume that Mr. Tomlinson had no idea the impact it would have on people's lives, both professional and personal. Email has brought about a communications revolution like nothing since the telephone. Flash forward 20 years to 1992 and the World Wide Web is born, introduced by Tim Berners-Lee. The World Wide Web, or simply web, is a way of accessing information over the medium of the internet. This is an important distinction. The web is a part of the internet, but does not constitute the entirety of the internet. It is an information sharing model built on top of the internet. The web uses a protocol called HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. A protocol is like a language spoken between devices over the internet. This particular protocol defines how messages are formatted and transmitted and what actions web servers and browsers should take in response to various commands. Browser applications such as Internet Explorer, Netscape, Safari, and Firefox access documents called web pages that are connected to each other via hyperlinks. This is all done using the HTTP protocol. 92 was a big year because it also saw the first audio and video multicast over the internet. The kind of streaming we consider standard today was unheard of at that time. 1993 gave way to the introduction of Mosaic, the first graphical browser for the World Wide Web. Mosaic made the web protocol accessible to all kinds of people using the mixture of graphics and text that we've gotten used to thinking of as a web page. In 1994, Real Audio became the first popular streaming software for the internet, allowing one to hear audio in near real time. Today, you can access some of your favorite radio stations around the world, talk to your friends, listen to songs, and more. And it all began barely more than a decade ago. As the internet developed, like with any new technology, it has seen its share of opposition. In 1996, many individuals were more than happy to see the launch of internet phone services, but telecommunication companies immediately asked the U.S. Congress to ban the technology. They were less successful than the recording industry, which in 2001 won a case against file sharing giant Napster for allowing the distribution of pirated music files, a significant new use of the internet. The World Wide Web and the internet have revolutionized everything from shopping to research and entertainment to dating. Who knows what the future of the internet has in store for us? It's one of the most dynamic technologies in history and we're just starting out. <laughs>